Ricardo Nieves is our guest, and he is the gentleman that was in the local news story that we wrote a story about for Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com that got picked up by DrudgeReport.com yesterday. Pennsylvanians coerced into giving cheek swab at voluntary, that's in quotes, checkpoint. And of course, what they call voluntary becomes mandatory. And we've played the local newscast out of Georgia, Florida, Texas, Colorado, New Mexico, uh, California. I mean, this is an every week occurrence now in the last year. And it's a federal program under the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy to quote C of your own drugs. And if they can intimidate you, they'll take blood or urine there on, uh, on the side of the road. But then they say, just give us a cheek swab because they can wipe cells easily off the inside of your mouth. So cops are sticking swabs in your mouth and intimidating people. And the average person falls down before them and does this. And this is to prime the pump for a national DNA database. Just like the feds 15 years ago started taking blood with rubber stamp warrants in Arizona, now it's nationwide without warrants. If they claim, I think you're drinking, I'm just going to take the blood. So, uh, Ricardo, um, thank you so much for coming on with us. And, of course, you reported it to the press so folks knew about it, uh, according to the Reading Eagle. Uh, tell us uh, what you said to city council. Well, first off, what happened to you? And obviously, what do you want to say about this to the worldwide audience? And we want to commend you for going of the thousands this was done to in your area. You were the one that went to city council. You were the one that raised the alarm. And more of us will now speak out, and we, and we are starting to reverse this. But uh, So we just commend you for not being a zombie, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alex, and thank you for having me on your show. Um, on Friday the 13th, uh, my sister and I were actually on our way to pick up my mother to take her to a doctor's appointment. And um, as we approached the uh, Warren, not the Warren Street, uh, the Bingaman Street Bridge, about midway uh, on the bridge, as we were coming near a bend, we had noticed some orange cones splitting the lane into two. I stayed in the right-hand lane, and I proceeded around the bend. And as I was doing so, I noticed a uh, police vehicle with flashing lights on. Since I couldn't move over to the middle lane, um, I uh, kept going forward. Uh, that's when I saw an um, a civilian person with uh, regular clothing just step off the sidewalk with orange cones uh, directing me and forcing me into a parking lot. Um, I couldn't go around them. Like I said, I couldn't run them down. And this uh, is key. This You're being commandeered. You're being given a custodial arrest. Under common law, you are arrested. Go ahead. I... Um, I, as I approached uh, several feet from his position, uh, like you said, I had to uh, go in the direction I was being forced and uh, directed to. So I got into the driveway and off to the left hand side, I saw an orange uh, construction sign, but this one read paid volunteered services. And as I entered into the parking lot, I had noticed that there was uh, an improvised staged parking spots with more orange cones. I say total of five or seven spots. And within each one of these spots, there were teams of people designated in each one of these spots with uh, just collaborating with each other. So I pulled into the first spot and my sister and I looked at each other and um, she said, what the hell's going on? And I had no idea. So um, I noticed a woman walking to my vehicle uh, naturally, I rolled down my window. And uh, with that being said, uh, she told me I was not being cited. She told me that I was not being pulled over. However, that she wanted to ask me a few questions about my driving behaviors and habits and take a uh, mouth swab and that she would pay me for this. Um, naturally, I said, no, thank you. Um, she came back to me and said, listen, I understand this is voluntary. Um, however, and she went back into her sales pitch again, you know, telling me that she would like to ask me about my driving. Yeah, habit. you're being racketeered. You're being pressured. Right. So basically, I, I, I again told her, no, thank you. Um, she said, listen, I know, again, this is volunteer. And, um, you know, went back into her sales pitch once again. Uh, this time she was going towards some literature she was carrying on her clipboard. Um, I, I immediately stopped and just said, listen, 
No, thank you. Mr. Nieves, stay there. We're going to come right back to you. Amazing firsthand account of this fraud. And again, it's a service. Why don't you want the service? Everything's a service. The IRS is a service. The vaccines are a service. Wow, we're going to come right back. And this guy's fighting back. We all need to, because in, up in Fort Worth, they didn't even tell you it was voluntary. It came out in the news. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The InfoWars crew absolutely loves coffee because we love being awake. And I am somewhat of a connoisseur of coffee. So many times you go to a restaurant or even to a coffee shop and the coffee tastes like garbage. And in all the different coffees I've tried, my favorite is grown in the high mountains, in shade, Arabica, on the border with Guatemala in Southern Mexico by the Chiapas farmers. I make sure we've done the research. I make sure it's the very best product that we can offer you when I put my name on it. And I believe, and it's my taste, so you may differ, that this is the best coffee in the world from Southern Mexico. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, 100% organic, Arabica shade grown. And then we have the Immune Support, 100% organic coffee, infused with a special type of mushroom known to boost the immunity. This coffee is seriously so smooth. I normally have to douse my coffee with cream and sugar and cinnamon and all kinds of tasty treats, but this, I drink this black. It is so good. Well, that's why I like it, is that it has a kick. It has really good caffeine in it. It has a good, clean wake up that lasts for a long time. Doesn't give me a headache, but it's so smooth. It's so delicious. Just try it out for yourself. I'm telling you, this is my favorite coffee. We went through a lot of trouble to bring you this. Just try it, and I think you'll be hooked like we are here at InfoWars. Well, folks, find out for yourself and support the information war today. It's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Ricardo Nieves is our guest from Pennsylvania. Headline, Pennsylvania's coerced into giving cheek swab at voluntary checkpoint. And he went and spoke out at the city council. So then it ended up getting picked up in the local news. We picked it up nationally, internationally. And look, they were sterilizing people secretly until the 80s when it got exposed. Now they got caught in California again. So government's always trying to do illegal stuff. This is a federal program in all 50 states. The Pacific Institute for Research and Evaluation was hired by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to run the checkpoint to look for motorists using drugs and to quiz them about their driving habits. And so if you just joined us, he's going to take a family member to the doctor and he gets directed off the bridge. The police force him to pull over. And then someone comes over and starts asking him questions. In most areas, it's police doing it. Uh, but I want him to describe exactly who this was. And then they just keep pushing. It keep, it's like, I won't go to Barnes & Noble hardly anymore. But that's not like a checkpoint because they keep saying, do you want the card? No, I don't. Are you sure you don't want the card? Yes, I'm sure. Come on, you know it's a really good card. What's wrong with you you don't want the card? And I'm like, well, because actually in studies it shows it isn't actually a good deal. And I don't want to be tracked what I read and I do. Oh, I can't believe you're giving me a problem, sir. Last time I was at Barnes & Noble, just last week, with my son, he wanted a couple books. I said, hi, how you doing? Listen, I don't want the card. I hope you're having a good Christmas. And she totally ignored me. And a minute later goes, well, do you want the card? And I said, listen, I told you, don't go through that. I'm a human being. And she was like a robot, not even looking at me. So it's all part of this mindless procedure. That's how they've got cops now with like glazed eyes. So, so, sir, let's go back now to what happened to you, Ricardo, in Pennsylvania. Again, break down the town you're in, where it is. She said to you three times, I want you to do this. You were getting up to the next time sh uh, sh uh, this person did it. Break it all down. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Again, um, uh, city of Reading, Pennsylvania, uh, county of Berks. Um, as, as you mentioned, uh, this was my third time I had uh, told this unidentified woman that had no name tag, did not represent uh, who she was working for or herself, or have any identifying information on her persons. Uh, she started reaching for some literature this time, after the third time that I politely told her no thank you. Um, she went to reach for it, 
And I told her, no, thank you again. Um, she went, tried to go into another spiel for the fourth time. And listen, I just told her, uh, I gave her uh, a disgusting look. And with the state of my voice, I just said, no, thank you. She walked away and, and I, was, I was finally free to go. Um, I rolled up the window, my sister and I looked at each other and my sister said, listen, they're lucky they got you because you were nice and you were polite. I would have cussed them out. So I was, I just wanted to get out of there. That's all I wanted to do. I never even wanted to be there in the first place. So as I'm looking for a way out, I notice a police officer sitting on the left hand side of me uh, next to the building, some several feet away. And um, he notices that I can't figure out the way to get out. And he points me back out to the way that I came in. So I left. Now, I took my, um, my, my mother to the uh, doctor's appointment, ran my sister home, ran my mother home. And this was agitating me all day. So once I got home, I, I talked to some trusted advisors, some friends and family members. And I finally called up the American Civil Liberties Union, in which I left a voicemail message for them. Still not happy, I um, reached out to the local me media here. And a subsequent follow-up call came back and told me that this was the National Highway Traffic Safety Association. And that if I wanted any more additional information, I needed to contact the Reading Police Department, in which I did. I spoke with an Officer Smith. I provided him my information and uh, he took my report. Uh, he told me to hold the line for a second. He came back on, he said, if I will find out if this is uh, us, uh, if we had anything to do with it, uh, because I couldn't identify the two vehicles, uh, the police vehicles that were clearly in the parking lot. I never did get a follow up call from him. So not happy, I reached out to the county because I wanted to know what I just went through. A um, little bit later on, I, I, it came to my attention, uh, again, reaffirming that it was the National Highway Traffic Safety Association um, and that a considerable amount of money was provided for this and that the security, uh, the police were paid for the security on this. Well, that lit the fires under my feet. I, I felt infringed upon. Um, my civil rights, my liberties, my constitutional rights from a uh, state, and, and all the statutes that go along with it. And I thought if this was me, how many other people stopped, got stopped? How many other people actually didn't know their rights and gave up this DNA swab? And, and by the way, this is the same group that wants mandatory breathalyzers on all the cars to where we're all guilty until proven innocent. I mean, it's just beyond a police state. So long story short, Unlike Georgia, Florida, Texas, where they have cops that basically try to make you do it, you got the lighter form but still got upset, as you should. They blocked the road. They made you go do what they wanted. And, and if Americans are so enslaved that they don't understand, this is how real tyranny begins. It's like the census is supposed to ask how many people live here every 10 years for congressional apportionment. Totally constitutional, reasonable. Not how, what kind of toilet do you have? Do you own a gun? We get this yearly business one now. Uh, you know, they're putting black boxes in the cars to track you by the mile and to tax you. I mean, this is all happening. So, and this is the same group pushing that. So, so long story short, they give you the runaround, finish up with what happened with that. You go to city council. Where is it going from there? Uh, tell us what else happened. Well, I went, I, I did go to city council. Um, like I said, um, uh, what lit my fires was that um, there was a considerable amount of money um, and they were paid for the security. So I'm thinking, okay, my civil rights were just bought. Federal dollars bought, used my local dollars to legally stop, illegally stop me. And with that, I, I learned that I could not, I had to complain supposedly to the federal level. My apologies. And here. by the way, if you would have blown up, they might have beaten the daylights out of you or arrested you. And I probably wouldn't have blown up, but I'd have gotten mad. Like, what are you doing blocking the road? What is this in America? Because I've been through checkpoints before and I tell the police that. I go, are you looking for a bank robber? And they're like, no, we're just doing a safety check. Yeah, a federal check. Of course, they always know who I am in Texas. They go, come on, Jones, just doing our job. I mean, it's just there to condition people. Go ahead. I, I, I didn't want to give them that satisfaction. Sure. I, no, you were I, smart. I, I took the polit I took the, the politeness uh, way out of it. So I went up to city council. I uh, put out a press release. And um, I was greeted by 
uh, and uh, a reporter there uh, before the meeting, and he had asked me if I had felt that the perception of police intimidated my 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 rationale into perhaps giving uh, my personal information or others. And I said, well, listen, if I was to walk into city council with seven various different attorneys behind me and one American Civil Liberties Union representative, do you think city council and the administration would be intimidated? Of course they would. This was nothing more than a, a gross abuse of power and, and, and federal intrusion of my rights. That your local tax money had to pay for. Yeah, yeah, your tax money, my tax money, our tax money. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just, I cannot believe that, that my local officials, I'm not sure who gave the order, who authorized it, but I'm disappointed. I'm very disappointed that people or whoever enriched themselves on so many different levels off of their voting constituents. Well, Mr. Nieves, I know what happened. And if you go read the article by Paul Watson and follow it over, you're absolutely right. It is a federal agency. They've hired private institutes to do it. They buy the local police either off duty, but in some cases use pressure for highway funds to the county or city to set up these checkpoints. And, and of course they have the DWI ones and all the rest of it. And it's just pure, TSAization of the country of the world. Anything else you'd like to add, sir, today? We just appreciate your testimony and the fact that you're uh, speaking out against it. Yeah, I, I, I will share with you what I shared with counsel, which I think is very fundamental um, in, in me, my pursuing this. Uh, when people are manipulated, excuse me, when people are manipulated, it's anti democratic. And what's being done here is being controlling people. People don't want to be controlled. People want to make their own decisions because consciousness and the freedom to think is a fundamental human right. The idea of free will being violated is something that even God doesn't do, yet man thinks he can do this to us. Wow, you need to start a radio show and uh, fight back because we need articulate patriots like you, sir, uh, to not just speak at the city council, but to really get on the offensive. Um, people always thank me for what I do. No, no, we've got a responsibility to do this and good job. And, and if uh, there's other updates down the line, contact us. And thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Alex. Very, very important. Well, there he goes, standing up for all of our rights. And this is all part of this creeping tyranny and political correctness and training us. Here's an ABC News story. Jennifer Lawrence, it should be illegal to call somebody fat. That's the hate loss. Oh, you say Santa Claus is white. You're, you know, you lose your job or get suspended as a teacher. But if you want to be foreign banks and rob everybody, that's okay. I mean, this is just getting crazy, ladies and gentlemen. They've got us distracted by all these diversionary things that aren't our rights, imaginary rights, exaggerated slights, instead of the real frontal assault on all our freedoms. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds?